Opening account statements when you've seen values drop can be really jarring and it can cause investors to ask the question, am I on the right path? Mm. And we think that's a normal question, but how do we respond to that? Well, we want to stay away from that knee jerk response. And so that's what we're going to get into today as we look at putting together a plan on the equity side. So today we're going to be talking about equity investment and specifically equity factors. And just again, some brief disclosures, we're going to look at past performance, but again, this is not specific advice for you. So Spencer, as we think about how equity factors can help a portfolio, what are some things we, sometimes we see people chasing performance. How can that hurt when you think about the different factors of a portfolio? All the studies would suggest that if we're chasing performance, if we miss out on particular days in the stock market that are the best ones, um, that that can hurt us. And sometimes clients will say, that's not me. Um, I stay the course. What we often see though, is that folks within their 401k, they'll just look at what funds have done best over the last one, three, five years, and they'll move in that direction without reference to what is my long-term approach? Mm. What do I believe about markets and how I'm constructing this portfolio? So that's why we want to talk about the three factors today, because if we have that thoughtful approach, then we're going to have ups and downs on those factors, but history would suggest that we're stacking the odds in our favor. So Spencer, you want to walk us through what are those three factors and maybe a quick visual of how we can think about that? Yeah. So the three factors are value, size, and profitability. And as we look at this visual in particular, value companies are on the left side here, growth companies are on the right side. So value companies are those that are cheaper on a price to earnings or price to book basis. This basically gives us a way to buy the unloved. Mm. You know, the old adage, buy low and sell high. This gives us a way to buy cheaper companies, mm. companies that their earnings, their profitability, uh, is cheaper than their growth counterparts. And those companies, whether we look at the US or Europe or Japan or the emerging markets, they've tended to outperform their counterparts over long periods of time. For those that are watching that don't know, can you just give us a brief overview of what is price to earnings? What is price to book? Yeah, price to earnings is the price of a company's stock relative to its profitability. So we might say, well, we love this particular company, but how much do we love it? Are we willing to pay 10 times more for a share of stock in this company that gives us the same earnings mm. as a share uh, over in this company? So you might say, well, I like Costco better than I like Walmart. Uh, I like to shop there more. Well, if Costco, if their dividends are only 10% of what Walmart's dividends are, uh, you might say, well, I, I prefer shopping at that company, but from an investment standpoint, it sure seems like Walmart is going to be paying me more over got a period it. of time because they've got a lot more dividends there. So again, that's the way that we would unpack buying a company and having more earnings coming to us. The second factor is size. So the size of a company, smaller companies have over time tended to outperform their large counterparts. So when we think about companies, and, and these would still be big to a lot of us, but their overall value might be $2 billion or less. You might think about a regional manufacturing firm versus a firm that might be an Apple or a Walmart or a Google mm -hmm. you know, yeah. out there that are the large firms. So again, if we look at any of those geographies, US, international emerging markets, smaller companies have tended to outperform their large counterparts. So as we think about size, you say small companies, how are yeah. that, how's that measured? Yeah, so it's measured on the value of the company with respect to its stock price, its, its overall stock valuation. So, um, you know, a company like Apple, as we sit here today, it's worth over $2 trillion. There are plenty of small banks that are out there that might be worth uh, a half a billion dollars. So a whole difference in, in magnitude uh, in there in terms of the valuation, because again, that small regional bank, it might have 10 locations. Yeah. and it might be worth a couple hundred million dollars um, in terms of its stock price, its overall value of its market capitalization, as we would say. Got it. The third piece there is profitability. So firms that have a higher level of expected profitability, if we hold some other variables constant, that expected profitability higher rather than lower tends to give us an idea of better rates of return. And we can look at back again, US, international emerging markets, tell the same story over long periods of time. So those three factors, we wanna tilt a portfolio in those directions without getting out over our skis. 
So think about this, you know, if we have a six-sided die dice and we're rolling it and we get uh, we get benefit on numbers one, two, three, and four, well, that's pretty good because that's two-thirds of the time. But we don't want to do that where it really increases our risk. Mm. So we don't want to say, well, we'll double the portfolio on numbers one, two, three, and four, but we'll lose everything on numbers five and six. Yeah. That's not acceptable risk yeah. to most of our clients uh, there. So we want to, to do that. We want to stack the odds in our favor, if we look at history at least, without introducing a whole lot more volatility in the process. Hmm. Yeah. And you know, as I think about, and I've, I've seen research, there's hundreds of different factors that people can focus on. Why do we focus on size, value, and profitability in particular? Well, there's a tremendous amount of research that's been out there. You mentioned hundreds of different factors. You know, you could come up with a factor that would be uh, that companies maybe that start with the letter J are better <laughs> performers than companies that start with the letter B. Well, we all probably can laugh at that and say, well, that, that's not driving performance. It's, it's results that correlate but don't cause. Mm. So we want to be careful about this. When we look back historically, those three factors in particular, they are persistent across many, many decades. They are persistent across all kinds of geography. So we see that show up in all of these different arenas. And there's also a backstory to it that makes sense. Mm. For instance, those value companies, they're cheaper on a price to earnings or price to book basis. We're buying the unloved. Yeah. There's been bad news that's come out you know, about a lot of these companies in terms of their prospects might not be as good. They're not the sexy company you know, that's, that's absolutely crushing it at every you know, earnings report. Now, as we buy that company, typically uh, what we're doing is, is buying it at a discount. Um, and we don't want to do that again with one company. We want to do that across a whole lot of different companies. Right. Same thing, size versus uh, size, large companies versus small companies. Small companies, oftentimes they are more sensitive to economic data. So their stock price might go up and down a little bit more quickly than large companies mm -hmm. uh, would that have maybe uh, more consistent processes and earnings and, and a portfolio. So we, we want to be careful in the way that we tilt, but we also want to recognize that there are backstories of why these companies have outperformed over long periods of time. Yeah. What's a viewer to do? What's the next step? If we say we don't want to chase performance, what, yeah. what, what next? Well, what we want to do is we want to have a plan in place where we're investing with intention because like we talked about and what, what we're going to get into in the next video is what has been the historical evidence and are there periods where this doesn't play out? Mm -hmm. And the answer is absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there are some periods where it doesn't play out you know, as well. We want to set a thoughtful plan in place though where we're applying a tilt in these directions that help to set the odds in our favor but we also have appropriate expectations. So when we get that account statement and we see that our investments have gone down mm -hmm. and our stomach drops, or yeah. when we look at our performance at year end and we see that one fund didn't keep up with its benchmark, we have actually a sense of why that happened, or at least we have rest that we know that we're investing in this particular way. And sometimes that won't uh, work out in that particular quarter or that particular year, yeah. but we're doing this with intention. You know, 2020 is a great example. Uh, these factors, some of them didn't work out in 2020, but then in 2021, they came roaring back. In 2022, they came roaring back. So we have to look at this over uh, an appropriate period of time. Yeah. We have to have that plan in place that we're content with so that we have a level of confidence and rest because we know that the account's gonna drop at some point. We know that the factor's not going to perform at some point. Yeah. But if we have a plan in place, then we stack the odds in our favor and we can adhere to that plan. Great. Well, thanks for joining us on this video today. If you found this information helpful, feel free to share it with a friend on Facebook. Or if you want more information about our firm, visit us at seriousretirement.com. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. If you like these financial planning videos, please share it with a friend. And if you have questions, go to our website at seriousretirement.com. This content was provided by Retirement Planning Services. We are located in Knoxville, Tennessee. You can visit our website at seriousretirement.com. The information in this recording is intended for general educational and informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advisory, financial planning, legal, tax, or other professional advice based on your specific situation. Please consult with your professional advisor before taking any action based on its contents. Advisory services offered through Retirement Planning Services, LLC.